Calling the meeting to order at 6.05. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Anybody got any adjustments to the agenda? I forgot to put on the agenda that we'd be opening the fuel bids, but that'll be under the treasurer's report. Yeah. Uh, they weren't sealed. It wasn't a RFP that I sent out for sealed bids. Oh. So the bills and payroll orders, we'll get to those. Um, minutes from the October 9 meeting. Did you want to look and see? Um, the part that you commented on is right in this paragraph here. See okay. if that's a little Thank better. You. Yeah, I'm okay, totally happy with that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I assume everything else is the same as in the email. Samantha Robin, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, public comment. This is for anything that's not on the agenda. Okay. No public comment. All right, then. Let's just get... To, oh, I just... I always want to put this on the agenda, and I forget. But I just like to remind people of all the opportunities that are available for our public service. We've got several unfilled positions. We need an animal control officer. We need a select board scribe. We need an auditor. We need a board of adjustment member, a planning commission member, and a town energy coordinator. So just don't all raise your hands at once. <laughs> right, hands Norm's putting his hands in his pocket. <laughs> Uh, okay, town clerk report. For the last couple of weeks, I have been basically um, checking over the tax bills when they come in. So when they go to Brandy, they're all ready to be deposited. So she can do her deposit, let's put it that way. What? So she can do her oh, deposit. Oh, okay, yeah. And I have the recording up to date. I have another... Um, Oh yeah, election training on the 1st of November for the tabulators. That one will be in Danville. Hmm. And that's about it. I was curious, so they're giving you all new machines for the tabulators, right? Yes. Is, are they going to take away that big plastic thing? No. Huh. So you're still going to be able to use that? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. It's not just going to be another useless hunk of plastic. No. Oh, good. No, we will still <laughs> use that. <laughs> uh, okay. And that's about it for me. Oh. Treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. Over the past two weeks, money has been flying in with Robin's help. Um, payroll $8,678.26. Accounts payable $40,000. $287.97. Cash receipts, we took in $831,658.86. Majority current taxes, delinquent taxes, land recording, copies, zoning. We had one direct deposit coming from the state for $108, which was recording and copies. Over the past two weeks, I transferred. 900,000 over into our money market. So we received our two bids for fuel. We have Gillespie's. You want to give those to her? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. 
So Gillespie's came <coughs> in um, for oil, $3.48. Propane, $1.58. From the New England Commercial Fuel Buyers Association, um, which is, oh, where are we? Who took it over? This is like, here's your president. Mm, yeah, but I was tr just looking for the company company. Anyway, so um, the other offer for propane was $1.75. Would the select board like to make a decision? Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does appear that Gillespie's is uh, cheaper on the propane, and the uh, fuel bit is whatever it's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Me. I will um, do our pre buy and cut the check and let them know that um, they have taken it, and I will notify the other. Um, the same. Let me just make a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion. Okay, you make a motion. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll second it, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, great news. Great news. Oh, yeah, the elevator? So, <laughs> the gentleman lift. Oh, sorry, Accessibility Liz. Systems. Bob Weber. So Bob is the one who installed our lift wow. years ago, years ago, and had this cute little story that I have to tell you. He says, all you need to know is to find out who I was, was ask the guy who painted the door that owns the garage in town. Oh. At the time, <laughs> they had removed the door and Brian Shatney had painted it in his garage. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> The only thing that was wrong with this, our lift is there was a bad rubbing where the magnet shuts the door. Rust had built up. Oh. All he did was clean off the rust and boom, elevator and lift works perfectly. Oh, wow. Wow. Get a new one. wow and nice. I will not be using the other company at all. So <laughs> when time comes for another inspection or oh, maintenance. You'll get an earful. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's so, great news. Mm -hmm. Wonderful news. I was, I was so did you, very disappointed in the other company. Did you? For, yeah. We're leading you on like that. Almost yeah. 900 bucks yeah. in the last two visits of saying we needed to replace our lift. So. The, uh, yeah. So did you look in the, the file? There's a file in there called lift, I think. Ever is that where is that where you I've found it? I've been the, here. We've always used the same company. Yeah. And the same vendor. Oh, yeah. Pretty, I've never... Yeah. And of course, when we switched vendors, I never had this company in the system. Yeah. Um, oh. So. Hmm. Um, it's always been the same. I just wonder how you found how you found him. Did you find him by looking in I the file? Out, I was doing bids, going out for bids. Oh. And I, he was one of the companies. Oh. And he's like, I, I was slightly disappointed that you guys never called me, because when he installed <laughs> it, there was no state inspections. Oh. So that's when they started. Mm. Later, years down the road. So. I will be using him now. Great. So no stairway, no. That's good. Building. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's great. No great big um, long ramp. Uh huh. No projects. Yeah. <laughs> this week, so taxes are due on Friday. Mm. My error is an extra day. <laughs> oh. Um, office hours are going to be um, regular. Tomorrow night will be open from six to eight. Um, Wednesday, I will not be opened. Thursday? Um, At night time. Yes. During the day. We will have the same 9 to 1. Oh, okay. So Wednesday evening, no hours. Thursday, again, 9 to 1. And then 6 to 8. On Friday, I am doing only 5 to 7. Um, there's the pumpkin walk, and I want to come see the kids. So, if you're waiting until Friday, 5 to 7. Okay, by 7. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you want me to post those hours on the website? Yes, please. I will Maybe be putting out Front Porch Forum mm -hmm. and Gary Clark's site tonight. Um, Send me an email. 
What's up? If you send me an email. I'll oh, yeah. yeah. I will do that. The other thing in postmarks, I accept postmarks. Um, there's the drop box on the porch. Yeah. We always warn people that if they're going to, don't just throw it in the mailbox on the postmark day, the last postmark day. They have to hand it to the clerk and make sure it gets posted. Oh, well, there's still a few. I know. You open the drop box and go, it's not really worth it. I got my money now, so. <laughs> yeah, so now we've got this Brookfield service contract. And that's just for, for the school. Um, I mean, if you guys wanted to review it, my thing is just keeping in line what the cost is when we do budgeting in December. Mm. That was my big thing on um, that coming through. Now, why are these two? Why are there two here? Oh, retain this copy for your record. Oh, I see. Okay. So, program number one complete annual major service $962 or 914 if prepaid by November 1. Program number two is two visits a year. Major and minor service, $1,568 or fourteen ninety. Norm, you want to say anything about that? Oh, we, I know you're not the... Or Paul? Paul? What are we talking? I missed the start of this. This is not the generator. <laughs> oh. Twice a year or once a year? And it's, being, all, it's all a... I mean, because we didn't... Being, being the age it is, I would recommend doing it twice a year. Yeah. I know we kind of got into trouble when we were doing yeah. it once a yeah. year. Yeah. We, we had problems before. We're checking it once a month ourselves, but uh -huh. I'm just giving oil and water yeah. and just mm -hmm. making sure it, that's what I would recommend. Okay. What do you think? I would go with his advice. <laughs> okay. I don't really know that much about generators. <laughs> All righty. It's, it's got not a lot of hours, it's got a lot of years on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll second that motion. Okay. All in I'll favor? Make a motion. Okay. <laughs> aye. Aye, aye. Okay. So that's 50. Should we? 1,400 and. Uh, 1,490 dollars versus 1,568. So that's like 70, 80 dollars if we pay it by November 1st. You think we should? Can you do that? Which is next? Well, no, I can do it. It's just. It's not in the right calendar year, and then I start twitching. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you really want to sit in the right fiscal box. year? <laughs> um, no, if you guys approve it, then that's where I pay it. Okay. Here. We'll take that too. <laughs> I don't need to sign it anywhere. Are we no. Good? Okay. One is enough. Is it for you? <coughs> okay then. Michael Gray. Okay. Um, so first thing on my list um, is um, that uh, the planning commission is down to five members, and I know the town would like to have seven members on the planning commission. So we put out um, an inquiry in the town through the front porch forum on the River Facebook page. Um, and we did get one taper. Um, his name is Andrew Delaney. Um, and he did come to our uh, planning commission meeting last Monday. And the uh, planning commission got to meet him. Um, and he stayed for the meeting and is still interested in serving on the Planning Commission. He does have experience. Um, when he lived in the town of Bethel, he was on the Planning Commission for 10 years um, and was the chair of it for a good number of years. Um, 
and he's also a lawyer, which uh, that might prove helpful at some point. Um, and the Planning Commission um, did vote to um, request that the select board appoint him to the Planning Commission. Okay, and Lizzie and I were both at that meeting, so we mm -hmm. got to meet him. What can do you we, think? Can we appoint him as the dog catcher too and kill two birds? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> teach him not to come to the meeting. Make him an Andy. He does have a dog. Uh, two dogs. <laughs> I don't know if we should do that or not. I'm just kidding. Let's say you thought it was a great idea. <laughs> so, you want to make a motion? I will make a motion to appoint him. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, You'll give him the good news, right? I will give him the good news. I guess we do have a letter we send to people who are <laughs> appointed, so okay. I'll try Robin to can work on that. Contact, although maybe in the text. I'm sure we've got his address. His yeah. address yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing on my list, um, and just a little background on this, it's the Bylaw Moder Modernization Grant, um, which last week at our Planning Commission meeting, um, we had invited um, uh, Christian Meyer and Claire Rock from the Center of Vermont Regional Planning Commission to kind of come and just uh, discuss with us different projects that they have um, on their work list for the town of Woodbury. Um, and one of the things that um, Claire um, had mentioned to us is uh, this bylaw modernization grant, which would be um, uh, a grant that would basically pay for um, or help pay um, provide the town with funds for uh, revising and updating its uh, zoning bylaws or zoning ordinance. Mm. Unfortunately, the application is due on November 1st, mm. um, so it's kind of a scramble thing. Um, and I do have some information about it here that I'm happy to hand out. Um, one of the things that needs to happen is that there's um, a fiscal year 24 municipal resolution for bylaw modernization, um, a form that um, basically is the uh, select board approving uh, the planning commission of the town um, applying for this grant. And I can explain a little bit more about the grant. Um, it's um, for up to $25,000. Um, there is a 10% match that if the town were to um, complete its zoning bylaws within <coughs> two years, that uh, grant would be forgiven. Um, complete and have it complete adopted. Complete and adopted, yes. So that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. our, the town match would be um, forgiven. There's also um, the possibility um, uh, and a request for the town to um, just put up a little money towards the project. Um, it helps, it's a little check in the criteria for who mm -hmm. does or doesn't um, receive the grant award. Mm -hmm. um, it can be left out, I think we did a similar grant, um, the Planning Commission for the Town Plan, and I don't think we did commit any town money to it and we still get the grant. So, mm. um, so it's just, it's a kind of a moot point. Um, mm. So I know that you don't have much information about this, um, but um, I know the Planning Commission thought it was a good idea. We did vote to go for the application, but um, it is up to the to the select board on basically what the board and how we would do this. So um, I can show you, here's the, um, here's the actual um, form for the select board. Um, and here uh, are some cutouts for the, again, I put in one for Chris too, I didn't realize that he would be there, but not be here. Um, mm -hmm. And then, let's see, mm -hmm. here, I also have the application which Jim Steithelm and I are working on uh, mm -hmm. with the help of um, uh, a, a person at the Central of Mountain Regional Planning Commission. Mm 
So if we sign this, then you will get it in by November 1st? Oh, I yeah, mean, that's you, a whole week yeah, away. And if you, right? if you don't feel that you can sign it, then um, we'll probably just wait till next mm -hmm. year. <laughs> well, it, in your town plan, in the award-winning town plan, you did point out one of your goals was to update our bylaws from mm -hmm. 1973 or whatever. Um, and... Uh, that needs to be done. I think basically that's. She did say that. I mean, I think Claire said that maybe fifteen thousand dollars was a more um, appropriate yeah, I number. I, I still think. You know, I just hope we don't end up with something that's fifty pages long. But the planning commission will have the right to yes. determine yeah. that, like you did with the plan, right? Pardon me. Like you did with the plan, you didn't have to take the long version. There is a part of this application that does um, give, um, and I'll just read it so that other people know. It's, um, after I get my glasses, um, we could um, designate the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to be our agent, and basically, um, so it says on the applicant on your resolution form, it says mm -hmm. check the box if the municipality authorizes its regional planning commission to serve as the agent for the applicant municipality or multi um, or multi town applicant municipalities, which is something else that happens with this mm -hmm. grant. By assisting with the preparation of the application, supporting grant administration, and being exempt from competitive selection if serving as project consultant. So my understanding of this little paragraph is that we would that we could just check the box that um, authorizes the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission to be our consultant agent. Um, they're already helping us with the application. Um, and then we wouldn't have to put this out to bid. We, we would just say, okay, Central Vermont. That seems a little too easy. I mean, it didn't does, you have yeah. to go out to bid for we the did. plan? Yeah. We did, yeah. And you ended up hiring them because they're so much cheaper? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, some consultants probably have a little choking up about the competitive nature of competing against a nonprofit that's funded by the state. But Yeah, know. they did email me that. Oh, they did? Yeah, they did, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well. So we can not check the box and we can put it out to bid. Um, uh, and, you know, they have been helping us with the application mm -hmm. and I guess they're okay with doing that um, either way. Hmm. And I have no opinion either way either. I'm, I'm fine with putting it out to bid. Um, I know usually other, like the local hazard mitigation grant, and we put that out to bid also, and mm -hmm. the Regional Planning Commission was the lowest bid. Mm -hmm. So um, I sort of anticipate that they will be again. Um, but um, I, I don't care either way. That's, that's up to... So. What do you think about our, our purchasing policy and having to bid things that are more than ten eight thousand dollars? That kind of. Uh, I think we settled yeah. right. We settled that that was eight thousand was yeah. the limit. Yeah. 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 But not knowing what it, what the numbers might be. It's kind of hard to say right. well, it's going to be more or less than $8,000. Yeah, and, and right now there is a person on the staff at the Regional Planning Commission who is trying to, is getting those numbers for us. Oh. So. Hmm. I mean, if we're already working with them, it kind of seems simplest to just stick with them unless it contradicts our policy. And, um, and I, you know, I trust them. Um, Claire's not going to be there. Claire has is already no longer a part of the central model. Mm. So you just have to hope that whoever's left is as good as she was. Yeah, there's a person named Eli Tui that's kind ah. of that this has been passed on to. Mm. A person that I haven't met yet. It is it is a new staff person that I fairly new. Mm. 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 Huh. And you know we have till the first. You can look over the stuff and think about it, and um, 
and let, let me know what you think. We don't, you don't have to make a decision tonight. Well, I know that the, uh, well, this is the last meeting we'll have before the first. Right, yeah. The, you know Hardwick hired somebody. Of course, they're in... They're in the Northeast so Kingdom, so they they might not have as many resources at uh, the Northeast Kingdom Regional Planning Commission because uh, they have a huge, huge region. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we have any kind of like window of what the anticipated cost might be? Um, I don't have an idea right at the moment. No. Okay. <clears throat> Hmm. I mean, it, 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 you know, if we were awarded the grant, um, then of course the monies would come from the award, the ten and the ten percent man, match. Um, if we, um, and I would anticipate that if there was a two-year window, that the planning commission would make sure that this thing was done within two years. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to work on it any longer than that. <laughs> So I'm pretty confident that um, it probably won't cost the town anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it would come near the $25,000. No, God, no. I mean, that would be absurd. And if we didn't get a word of the grant, could we just not do it? Um, do it another well, year? Yeah, yeah I think we, we do might it. try to do it on our own, but um, um, we would probably reapply uh, next year mm -hmm. if we didn't get the award. Yeah, I am concerned that, well, I mean, I think we should apply. It doesn't mean we have to accept it. I'm just, I'd That's like to also, yeah. find some, I don't know, it just seems like it could be so blown up. But Yeah, and I would hope, I mean, I would hope that the Woodbury Planning Commission would, I mean, we don't want to make, any new, the zoning draconian. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't want to make it a 50-page document. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, short and simple. And you know, there will be a number of hearings that it will be very similar to the process for that we had for developing the town plan. There will be chances for uh, many chances for public input mm -hmm. on the thing. Um, you know, because I know that there's a broad spectrum of opinions about zoning. Um, and you know we definitely will make it so that it works for Woodbury. Um, hmm. So let's see. Hereby designated as the grant. It says, whereas the municipality of Woodbury is applying for funding as provided in the FY24 Budget Act 78 and may receive an award of funds under said provisions, the Department of Housing and Community Development may offer a grant agreement to this municipality for said funding, and whereas the municipality is maintaining its efforts to provide local funds for municipal and regional planning purposes, or, yeah, we do pay our annual assessment to the Regional Planning Commission, mm -hmm. or that the municipality has voted an annual or special meeting to provide local funds for municipal and regional planning purposes. The legislative body of this municipality enters into and agrees to the requirements and obligations of this grant program, including a commitment to match funds in accordance with the program's requirements. Michael Gray is hereby designated as the grant administrator, the person with the overall administrative responsibility for the bylaw planning grant program activities related to any the application and any subsequent grant agreement positions. Your name's on there already, so thank yes, you for that. Yes, I, I, I filled it out a little bit. <laughs> And then the grant application is successful and funds are awarded. The following individual will be the signatory on behalf of the municipality. I don't know who the, oh, it says the signatory must either be the chief executive officer or a select board member, the town manager, city manager, or the town administrator. So, um... Check the box if the municipality authorizes a regional planning commission to serve as the agent for the applicant municipality. 
or multi-town applicant municipalities by assisting with the preparation of the application, supporting grant administration, and being exempt from competitive selection if serving as project consultant. I mean, the box is already checked. Well, I checked it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I can uncheck it. <laughs> I wasn't totally clear on what the, I mean, I read the language I know, times yeah. and sort of, I don't think this is going to be a really huge job. I mean, there are certain state rules that have to right. be incorporated, mm -hmm. uh, but um, otherwise it doesn't have to be a big deal. But I guess if, if uh, we sign this and they decide on a number, then do we have to pay that number even if we end up not using them very much? Can't you wait until you get the numbers? They're, they're work, you said yeah. they're working on an estimate, right? Or yeah. So um, I would wait until we got that and then decide. Well, um, except that the application is due on November 1st. That's the gotcha. catch, which mm -hmm. is next Wednesday. Um, what did uh, the woman's name, Eli, who is the staff person, um, she is getting estimates from different folks to have a sense of what the number would be mm. that would go on the application. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I don't have a clue um, mm -hmm. what that number would be. Um, there is a listing on the application, which did I give you a copy of the application? Um, yeah. Which is, you know, Claire has partially filled the application out already before she left her job, and there's a kind of a scope of work there that she listed. Um, I have a copy of that here too. <coughs> yeah, this work plan is all zeros. Yeah, yeah, she so. doesn't have numbers, but she mm -hmm. does have a, um, a listing of what mm -hmm. the work would be. Um, and you know, Jim and I discussed, you know, different how many public hearings, what kind of outreach we want to do, and this would also be added to that. Mm. Let's see there. That's the wrong one. In Woodbury, renters are the most cost burden group. 28% of renters are paying 30% or more of income on housing costs. How do they know that from uh, census data, probably? Data. Yeah. <laughs> According to 2020 data, there were only four vacant housing units available to rent. So, Michael, these are just two separate parts of the grant application, so we're not we're asking for money, but we're not really committing like town funds anyway, right? No. Okay. Other than the 10% match, which mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we would be reimbursed if we finish the zoning bylaws mm -hmm. and have them approved by, um, by let's see, it's November 1st, 2020, 2025. Mm -hmm. yeah, by the end of November, I think it's November 31st. So yeah, we aren't committing any mm. town funds. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Um. Yeah, I'm really not okay with without a number. I mean, if okay. they tell us it's going to cost ten thousand dollars, I think that's outrageous. Uh -huh. We don't need to do that. They can okay. pay me two thousand dollars. I'll do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I still have my consulting business. <laughs> no, no, but really, I think. Of interest, but, uh, um, <laughs> Sure, well, yeah, really. we can put it no. out to bid and you right. can submit a bid. And oh, no, I'm just kidding about that part. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, a, yeah, I mean, it does seem like it, they could blow it out of proportion. I mean, what did we, they, we got a grant for the plan for what, $10,000 plus the town put $10,000 in? Do you remember? I don't recall, but I don't, I don't believe the town put a lot of money into that plan. No. It was all volunteer work. Right. And, oh God, yeah. And, uh, but I mean, I think we did put in ten thousand dollars one year. Town meeting, did we approve ten thousand? Yeah, I think so. And that was that was you know the uh, estimated cost. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 
the League of, excuse me, uh, Regional Planning Commission came in around $10,000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were right on budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, then you'd, you did apply for another grant that we got for public outreach, if I remember right. That's correct. And uh, mm -hmm. so that was, again, no harm to the town budget. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would advocate that the select board sign that because, you know, you're not encumbering any town plan, uh, excuse me, any town funds. And, you know, they have a proven record of, uh, you know, being you know, experts in their field. And I don't see where it's not a good, you know, good deal for the town. I am hoping to have figures in the next few days. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, you know, if you want to, I don't know if you can tentatively approve it tonight and based, and then if the amount that comes in um, is outrageous, mm -hmm. um, then we could just uh, put the application in the recycling bin. Mm. Could be like a it with a cap, like a cap to no, the No, we really don't have any idea how much it might yeah. cost, though. Mm -hmm. So if whoever is looking for prices is probably looking at other towns and what they paid, uh, maybe, or? In the email that I uh, got back from Eli today, um, they were basically consulting with different other different entities to mm -hmm. get a sense of the price. And, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Claire probably could have just yeah. <laughs> um, done it on uh, hmm. Okay. And the other part is, you know, we, um, you know let's say we uh, the application was for $20,000 and if we only spent $10,000, then that would be, um, you know, we don't have to spend all of the money that we um, apply for. Oh, okay. So if they, so if we, so if we check the box and they come up with $10,000 for an estimate and a grant, you don't think they're going to want the whole thing? Probably. I mean, that's that's kind of business as usual, yeah. isn't it? Um, but maybe yeah. not. You know, yeah. it depends on how much we involve them. The plan, yeah. you know, how much the planning commission involves them, mm -hmm. um, and how, how much of the the grant work we do ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess <coughs> well, this is the application. Where's the, let me see that one. So oh, this is the, this oh yeah, this, yeah. This one, yeah, resolution for bylaw modernization. So, I guess I, I wouldn't mind signing this if we uncheck the box. Okay. And then if we want to go back and revise it and check the box later, I don't see why we couldn't do that. Um, well, once we get a number, okay. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I mean, we can. The catch is there won't be another select board meeting for you to decide on what, right? How how you want that right. to, to read? Yeah. Um, unless you wanted to call a special meeting, which I doubt we yeah. really want to do. Mm. <laughs> um, okay. Well. I do have a copy here that where the box is not checked. <laughs> um, if you mm -hmm. want to trade. What do you think? I don't have Sign a both problem them. with That's true. There you go. the box checked. There you go. You can call the one away that you don't want. I mean, we're not going to be, Woodbury is not going to be paying the money regardless as long as we get it done within two years. So oh, right. to me, if it streamlines everything to use, mm. um, them and if they've worked with us before and we trust them, it mm -hmm. seems like it would just be the easiest okay. thing. Okay. So you want to sign both of them and wait to? to <laughs> sure. You want to just go ahead that. and whatever they want. <laughs> I'm good with that. Sign both. The other one. Okay. okay. And I'm willing to be the uh, the uh, signatory. Okay. Since I'm sort of involved with the whole planning business. You want to um, fill that in on your computer when 
my information or do I um, handwrite it in here? Hand, maybe handwrite it in. Uh, okay. Really. I know I, I have, there's a spot where I have to hand sign it, which I haven't done. So in the next few days, we'll come up with a figure, and I will let you know what it is, and then we can decide which form. Okay. Or, yeah, I think, sounds like if the money figure doesn't appear to be outrageous, then we're okay with using the form with the, um, yeah. authorizing them to be the mm -hmm. agent. Um, and if it seems outrageous, then um, we'll put it up to bid. Do you need us to sign the other one too? This one? No. Uh, oh. That's the application oh, that's itself. The application. Okay, so we don't have to sign that. No, that was just kind of for your information to okay. see what, what they're asking for. So who will determine if it's outrageous? The planning commission or the select board? The select board. No, I don't really have any point of reference to know what is outrageous. <laughs> oh, shoot. Let me finish. In the wrong place. So I'll let you know when I know, and you can let me know which form to use. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if, it was, if the deadline wasn't so soon, you know, we could kind of wait. These both it. have a mm. box checked. They do? <laughs> you got some more. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, just cross one out. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well okay. Oh, well, you copied. <laughs> yeah. Well played. Sneaky. I, really I guess I don't have to do them both. <laughs> well, I should I do it. I thought one was unchecked because it was one that um, you and I were looking at yesterday. <laughs> well. Oh, well. Oh, well. So I don't have to fill them both out. Oh, no, I guess not. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll, I'll let the. Well, Diana does have some experience with this stuff, so she would know whether it was outrageous or not. Um, John, John yeah. was just asking me how how would we know that it was an outrageous amount, um, and I wouldn't know. You'd probably but, have but to. You yeah, do probably have, have some to look up a little research with this, too. With this stuff. Um, I'm Diana. going to talk with the lady in Hardwick who's working with a. They're working with a consultant. Of course, okay. Hardwick is four times the size of Woodbury, but right. they are working with a consultant, and I'm interested in finding out how that's going. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think more than ten thousand dollars would be outrageous. So let's see. What else is on the list? Um, okay. So I did want to. Uh, where is it? Oh, good. I haven't lost it yet. So, the other thing, is there anything more about the, this application? That, are we pretty I think much finished with that? We're or? good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, um, I wanted to just give everybody an update on the outdoor classroom. Um, I had been kind of wondering about it myself. Yeah. Um, so, I sent an email to Joe uh, Houston or Houston, I'm not sure. Either. How he pronounces his last name. There are two, two different families in the area. Right. And, um, but anyway, he sent an email back um, to me saying that there are two projects that they're still working on. Uh, one is a shoreland development project and a, with a resulting permit um, for the classroom. Um, and then the other is a design print that needs to be. Um, created and then approved by the fire marshal. So those are the two uh, projects that they're working on right at the moment. Um, and then uh, he mentioned that once those two permits are approved, um, they have an engineer ready to start um, to put together some structural plans. Um, and it's his hope that the project will be ready to break ground in the spring. <laughs> so. Um, so I've they are seen still plans yeah. for this that like they already had. Yeah, plans. really. Well, uh, yeah, Michael Sadler Michael did Sadler. kind of put together some plans and um, 
back um, when we were working on this, um, and Peter Pelsel mm -hmm. was still part of the mm -hmm. committee, um, and Larry Elder was still, mm -hmm. you know, the, kind of the school maintenance person, but the whole OSSU, um, they did work out some plans and materials and costs and all of that. Um, but, you know, the, the thing that's kind of sad about this is that because, you know, it was going to be a school town kind of joint project and, you know, so the town would have use mm -hmm. of the building also. Um, but the fact it's a public building and it's related to the school, the whole what has to be done got totally kind of blown out of proportion okay. in my opinion. Um, so mm -hmm. it's just been kind of dragging for quite a, quite a while. And my concern was, well, they've sort of tabled it because of every everything else and, uh, you know, the town has a bunch of mm -hmm. money that is mm -hmm. promised yeah. towards this project. And, and I thought if they weren't going to do it, then we could use the money elsewhere. Yeah. So that was why... You really couldn't just push it down that way onto the land that the town owns. Oh well, not too well, late for that. Yeah. Um, there is a nice yeah. spot for it down there. Yeah. We did clear it out and, yeah. um, you know, um, but it was going to be a very simple project mm -hmm. where the, you know, people in town would help put it together and Larry was going to be a part of it and, you know, and it just got totally railroaded by... Yeah. Um, bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, yeah, which is kind of sad. But, um, yeah. but it would still be, a, I, I think, a nice thing to have at some point in the future. Yeah. Um, so we so found out when, when I was studying the mill pond that shoreline regulations only apply if a body of water is larger than 10 acres, I think. Yeah. Well, this has something to do with the fact that it's a wetland. It's a wetland. area. It's a yeah. So there's other criteria for yeah. that. Yeah. So you get a conditional use. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's less than 100 feet away? It, it is. Yeah. Where, the, where the plan will, oh. is to put the, the uh, building. Um, <coughs> it's less. Well, thank you for that update. Sure. <laughs> oh, uh, but the other thing is that the... Uh, fire alarm thing. Right, so back when Larry was still um, involved in this project and still, um, you know, the head of the maintenance for the, the elementary schools mm. and OSSU, um, and Paul probably knows some about this too, but, um, you know, he met with the fire marshal and in part of having that building, you know, be under code or whatever mm -hmm. as a part of a school classroom or whatever there were certain criteria for that were needed um, and the solution that they came up with is that there would be a fire alarm system for the library community room for this building um, and at the point at that point in time it sort of makes you know maybe we should have that anyway because um, um, you know it, it would be nice mm -hmm. to have some kind of fire alarm for for this building um, and I think the issue, I was on the select board then, I think the issue was is that we hadn't budgeted it, mm -hmm. you know, the system. And we did pick someone. I don't know where those, because um, Larry did find, get some bids submitted. We, yeah, I came across the notes today. Um, I was cleaning out my notebook and found where we did select Mm -hmm. uh, the guy from Hardwick, I think Bill Vance is his name. Yeah. M E I maybe is the yeah. company name. But yeah, where are the bids of paperwork is I, I had them for a while and I did bring them down to the town office mm -hmm. and put them on Brandy's desk. Ah. So um Brandy probably knows mm -hmm. where they are. Mm -hmm. um, because I, someone from OSSU was in the office when I was in there last week. Mm -hmm. yeah, asking about yeah. Asking about Russia. whatever we came of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the thought process? I it seems like we could just have smoke detectors and CO two detectors and not go through the expense of having a whole system. Well, installed. Yeah. Yeah. smoke detectors could go off, but <laughs> well, if there's nobody in the building, who's going to know that they're going off? I mean, Paul. Yeah, I spoke. I spoke to the fire marshal about this. Technically, this building's in violation because it's a school. Oh, okay. All schools are required. It's part of the school, but it's not physically attached. Gotcha. Because I asked the same question. I, mm. In fact, I 
used to have the job for the guy. Okay. Thinking that this technically should have had a fire alarm system from day mm -hmm. one and doesn't. So it sounds like they're doing is trying to get this resolved. They're going to cut you at not having to run it out to the gazebo exactly. classroom. Oh, okay. Okay. Technically, that would too. It's what he's saying. That's if it fixed this problem, we won't make you address that. Oh, Because it's, it's kind of an outdoor cabana, if I remember, it's not a closed building. Because uh -huh. I asked the same question. I had lunch with him once and asked mm -hmm. and, and what's going on with Now that. that you mentioned that, Paul, I do remember yeah. Larry saying yeah. that also. Yeah. It, they're just trying to rectify this problem. They're saying basically fix this problem and we'll, we'll let that be. Yeah. So this isn't like a choice. This is like, there's a yeah, role that we That's what it sounded like to me. Because okay. it really should have had why it didn't. I couldn't tell you why. But. Uh -huh. So we probably, I mean, I, you know, I just bring it up now just, because we we had sort of planned on it, but it hadn't been budgeted. But you know, pretty soon the select board will be creating a budget for the next fiscal year, um, and maybe we would want to include this in the budget. Or maybe was it? Do we insure this building or does the school? I can't remember that. We um, they do we, we insured this building. So one other place you can look is if this is under the league. The league has a grant program twice a year that you could apply for that would pay toward that fire That's alarm true. system. Because mm -hmm. we did that for the town yeah. garage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a 50-50 match, if I yep, remember. Yep, that's right. Yeah. So I think it's like uh, October and April. You know April's one of the deadlines you could apply. You definitely want to rebid because everything's a lot more that's expensive true. than it used to be. Because mm -hmm. right the bid is, at this point, almost two years old. Yeah. We do have a copy. We of do the have a. We did. Uh, we budgeted uh, library fire alarm twelve thousand dollars. Wow. So we'll have to redo that, I guess, in the next fiscal year, in the next budget coming up. And when you say the league, we didn't spend the greatest. Yeah, the league, you mean the town, yeah, uh, league of cities and towns. Okay. Yeah, they've got a grant program. We've applied for stuff at the fire department. I think it's a, a next deadline to be April. Mm hmm. If you want to just get it bid and apply, it's a pretty simple application. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah, so the definitely over $8,000, so we'll have to mm -hmm. bid that again. Huh? So, we have the, the town. Unless the guy who's building. Yeah. Right, so and it's under the league, you can definitely apply for it. And the school ensures that one. I couldn't remember. I knew they. I knew they did that one. I couldn't remember. This was part of it. So what we, if the, the person who got the bid decides to he would stay with that bid? Could we just? I, mean, I guess yeah. we could ask. <laughs> it's about seven percent right now. Really? Wow. Oh. Costs are. Oh. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, hang on is all I'll tell you. Just one other thing here, and then I will sit and listen. Um, <laughs> so another thing that was mentioned, oh, and by the way, just a little aside, because we haven't had one yet tonight, and usually we have a few, but Christian Meyer, who is the executive director of the Regional Planning Commission, is John Meyer's son. So he does have kind of a indirect connection to the town. It was interesting mm. to learn that. Um, so that's just an aside. Um, but anyway, when the, when they came, uh, Christian and Claire, um, they also mentioned that they the Center for Vermont Regional Planning Commission has received a chunk of money, I think it's from the state, it's uh, entitled a Municipal Technical Assistance Program. And Woodbury is on the pre-approved <coughs> list of towns um, that might not have the administrative expertise to take advantage of various grant programs that are available. And that's definitely true. Mm -hmm. um, so um, they um, were just kind of asking the Planning Commission and um, you know, kind of just wanted to bring that out here. Uh, if other people have ideas um, for different projects or that might be um, Thing. Well, is there a grant that might help pay for that? Um, mm -hmm. That they would be able, you know, we could have them research that for us. And if there was, <coughs> then, um, mm -hmm. they would help us to um, apply for that, mm -hmm. for whatever grant it yeah. is. I was going to talk to the select board tonight about 
uh, maybe uh, going back to our town hall renovation project and um, because we had done a bunch of work and uh, put together an application for ARPA money that did not get approved but it's still a good project and there are I know Vermont Housing and Conservation Board is one place that does do historic buildings as well as conservation and uh, so that's kind of a community development it's not an economic, but it's a community development kind of project that I, th I still think we need a better place than this. Yeah. <laughs> Although this is above the. Plus, well, so <laughs> well, so the town hall, just barely. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's just something, you know, um, we can explore that mm. more in the future, but if there's some ideas. Thoughts. So yeah, there, there was some talk in the legislature last year about how some poor towns can't take advantage of all this stuff that's out there. So the legislature funded a program and mm -hmm. to help poor towns like us, it's who have some very capable people, but just not quite enough <laughs> to do everything. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. I'm done. You're done? Alpies? <laughs> you still awake? Uh, yeah, barely. What was that thing I saw down at Buck Lake Road today? That is an excavator with a jackhammer on it. I thought maybe so. Yeah. Yeah, so both excavators are now on site and they mm -hmm. are ready to go into action tomorrow. Ooh. I had asked our resident geologist to give us a little report um, based on him having been there. And when he said he wasn't going to be here today, I emailed him twice and said, can you please just tell us your opinion? Of, but I haven't heard, so I guess we'll have to go with you. Yeah, well, we, we met with engineers mm -hmm. on site, mm -hmm. um, and both engineers were saying that it's not stable mm -hmm. and that it would be an astronomical amount of money to fill the hole. Mm -hmm. So we thought somebody mentioned maybe a bridge, mm -hmm. a type of bridge that we could uh, sort of bridge over the slide, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but both engineers again said there's nothing here to hook to, mm -hmm. and there's nothing saying that it's not going to slide more. <clears throat> so the next idea was to jackhammer the ledge out that is on the uphill side mm -hmm. and just sort of move the trail over. Mm -hmm essentially and so that sort of was the general consensus of everybody that was at the meeting uh, being the best solution you said there were two engineers there there was there was a soils engineer oh, okay and then there was yeah. an engineer from Brian DeWolf. somebody here yeah yeah uh, so they both <coughs> said that this is not stable and it's no. no way to really fix it without crazy money. Oh. So and this is and this is actually going to be if when we pound this ledge out it's more of a permanent fix. It's not just a temporary. Hmm. Because now the trail is sitting on solid ledge and it's not going anywhere, particularly mm -hmm. in that location. Mm -hmm. There might be other spots on the trail that slide or fail, oh. but this spot will be solid. I so, was also hoping that Chris would Talk to Rock of Ages and or Swenson rather, and make sure that they're all okay with it because it, they still own the land. Yeah. Even, well, I, I brought that up also mm -hmm. as to whether to now that we're sort of moving the trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're moving it onto somebody else's somebody's yeah. property, and he said that it is not Swenson's. In that that particular location is not Swenson's property, so. That kind of lead me to think that well maybe we should do some more homework before we. Mm. Yeah, because whose is it? Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> I'm not sure. I'm a. S I don't know. I think it's a, according to other people who looked at it. I forget if it was Pete or somebody else, but there is a woman who owns a piece of land. Um, that's basically inaccessible. Um, Tracy something. And, I, and uh, her land is like behind 
uh, Stewart's yeah. and <coughs> goes down to in between the what? Be. Yeah. It should be on the. the oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Tracy Fritz, I think, maybe something like that. Uh, she used to call once in a while and say, "How can I log my land? I don't have any access." And mm -hmm. yeah, because her she does go down to the road, but you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. She should be able to access the trail. She yeah. Mm -hmm. Use the trail yeah. for logging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has happened in, in the, the right, past. In yeah. the right time of year. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't suggest yeah. it in the spring, but yeah. you know, during mud or Anyways. Uh, during mm -hmm. frozen ground. Um, so I, I confirmed it with Chris, and he says, "Yeah, let's go for it." Let's okay. So he did look at. Yeah, with, he has been there then. And oh yeah, he was there, around and it. he. Like I said, the general consensus of everybody that was at that meeting said the best way to go about this is to smash that ledge out. Oh, oh, he was at that meeting. Did he? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't Chris realize was that. there also. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, the engineer also said he would write an email mm -hmm. uh, explaining that, mm -hmm. explaining his mm -hmm. his that he Opinion. would not be necessary for engineering this particular site mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. our new, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but he said yeah. he was going to send an email out mm -hmm. to the select board. Uh, maybe he just hasn't got that mm -hmm. done yet, mm -hmm. but um, given the time of year, we don't want to wait. And that was sort of what mm -hmm. I took from Chris was, mm -hmm. let's get going on it. So I arranged for an excavator to come. Uh, the rental that we've already had is on site also. So we're using the big one? It They're both big. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're both very big. Uh, yeah. So will yeah. all the town crew be up there working on it tomorrow? Uh, except for me, because I'll be in the office tomorrow doing FEMA with this guy. So you're letting somebody else do the jackhammer thing? I'm going to be there in the morning to start them. Okay. And, yeah, I have no choice. I mean, Greg is actually, that was another part of my report, Greg is... Wednesday is his last day this week mm. um, and he's got a doctor's appointment tomorrow so Greg's uh, not going to be very useful for us mm. for the next little bit and oh, Joe? Well. Joe's fine he's full bore uh, and Timmy's right there beside me we're, we're, we're good mm -hmm. um, we have put a couple of trucks together for the event, we get a little bit of white stuff or frozen ground. Oh, jeez. Mm. It's in the air. It's coming. Yeah. Melvin has got this morning. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there was so. Six weeks from now, Mel. What you got? Yeah. Yeah. Old pond yeah. yesterday. No, I saw them out in six weeks. <laughs> so, so, Alfie, I, I'm yes. just wondering if we don't yet know for sure who owns the property, how can we commence work without permission <laughs> from them? Well, uh, the, the Partial relief that we have is that there's there should be a 50 foot right away. Okay, so we're staying within. So I that. think we're going to be within that right away. Okay, yeah. got it. I haven't really looked at that. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming I haven't I haven't really identified anything that says that we have a 50 foot, but most uh -huh. right aways are 50 foot. Is there any chance that? This would be a temporary repair, and then the, the a bridge would be a more permanent repair that we should put in the, I, for FEMA. No, I don't. Think okay, so. all right. Um, because there's there's still going to be like a big drop off, but there is. I guess those we'll, people we'll have to put up. To we'll have to put up some sort of railing or something. Yeah, which the Snow Machine Club is also willing to help with some yeah. of this. There. They're going to cough up some money. They said that Steve Gray, that was here at the meeting, mm -hmm. said that he would help with the, with yeah. the railing. They're going to put up $10,000. Some, sort of, some sort of railing just to keep snow machines mm -hmm. from tumbling over, um, mm -hmm. you know, that big drop off. Mm -hmm. So I've got some allies. This is a big project, there's no mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. But uh, given the time, we gotta, we gotta act on it. We gotta move on. And okay. it sounds like I was supposed to meet with FEMA this morning on site so they could get their eyes on it, and they totally blew me off. Oh no, kidding! Again, 
Do they know how far it is and how hard it is to get there? Did you have to like bring your ATV or something? Or? I didn't. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was. I was just going to walk it with them. Oh. Uh, I walk. So that was going to be part of my report. So. Oh. Okay. No, it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Last Tuesday on the 17th, we had a conference call with FEMA, and we were aware that FEMA wanted to go out and see the rail train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we asked our FEMA contact, when could the site inspector be out? So on the phone, she yelled over to one of her colleagues, when can you go out and see it? And the gentleman replied, any day, any time next week. So it was like, okay, Alfie wanted Monday because he wanted to start work. Mm -hmm. And so we had arranged for a FEMA site inspector to come out and be on site at 9 a.m. And I called Alfie today and it didn't happen again. So this is the second time it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So that, and that's pretty disappointing. Mm -hmm. So with that, I called my FEMA contact and I said, so what's going on? You know, this is the second time. That's a, as Alfie said, it's a huge project. Mm -hmm. Probably the largest one we have in town. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know. So we have another conference call tomorrow with her, and that'll be top on the agenda. Why won't the site inspector come up? We've only had one site inspector come up, and that was our first project scoping meeting mm -hmm. back on September 11, sep September 7th. And this gentleman went out with <coughs> Alfie and visited three sites. We've yet to receive his report back, mm. which leads me to believe that we won't be getting these site reports, which is okay because we have enough documentation using photos and using mm -hmm. uh, hours and material mm -hmm. costs, uh, equipment costs. We have, mm -hmm. we've quantified all that information. So shame on them for not sending a site inspector. So it, would they be happy with maybe a video? No videos. No. No. Videos. <laughs> a <have> drone? <laughs> no. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, that's, that's another part of my report. Okay. Well, it's much better now. I'm not the only one yeah. that. Pictures are okay. <laughs> <coughs> pictures are fine, but well, it's not essential. Yeah. So we have enough pictures of the rail trail yeah. and all our other sites to satisfy. Mm -hmm. A video would be just who would shoot the video. Mm -hmm. Who would shoot the video? Well, I guess that would be. No, oh, I don't know. Get the work done. <laughs> Iron Jim. Yeah. Well, I can. I can hold the phone in my mouth and run the. Tape it to your helmet. Tape it to my helmet. Put it on your helmet. Oh. Yeah, that one that goes on your helmet, you can use. Oh go. yeah, like a GoPro yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Give you a body cam. Stop that. He said, "Watch the video." <laughs> Um, okay, well, so we're that. we're underway on that. I will um, need an estimated cost for that repair. <coughs> yes, we're still working on that. But as numbers are coming in, you know, I've got the rentals. I've got the, you know. Uh, How do you refuel the thing? You have to bring it all out. And uh, no, I got I got a tank on my truck. And oh. I just bring it to the to the machine. Mm -hmm. Oh. Fill them up from there. Yikes. Which I'll have to do first thing in the morning because they're both full. Hmm. The, rental one, the new rental is probably full. The one we just brought there is not. Hmm. But I have a tank right on the back of my truck and uh. pump it in there. So hmm. Hopefully, with that heavy equipment, more of the rail trail works. Well, there's that. There is that. Hmm. You know, it's a oh, heavy geez. machine and it's doing this. It's creating vibration as it's, hmm. you know. So we're going to be, I told the guys we have to be extremely careful with this all the way through. Yeah. Um, bringing trucks in and out or... Is know. there a, like special headgear that you should wear or something or helmets or... Uh, well, the machine seeks to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the machine has a, a, a shield on it uh -huh. so that if rocks fly, it'll, it won't come through the uh -huh. windshield. So there's that. Uh, we can... It, we'll figure out how loud it is. Maybe we need to wear ear protection. Oh wow! I was more I'm more concerned good. about falling over the edge. Well, that I would be where the the, the ground yeah, with the rain we had this week on the ground is once again totally Mushy. saturated with water. Yeah, that's kind mm. of yeah. It didn't rain that much, did it? 
We got over, we got about two inches of six calls in weather this weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's a full call. Yeah, they're full call. Our rain gauge said it was three and a half inches. Three and a half. All it did is rain. So I am not trying to beat a dead horse with this. Um, should we be like hundred percent verifying that there is a fifty foot right away for the rail trail, like? ASAP before the work commences. Well, I think I think Chris looked into that a little bit, okay. and maybe he's got maybe he can enlighten us. Okay. Um, Brian Shatney uh, maybe an email to him would would satisfy that. Okay. So yeah. Brian Shatney might know because he was part of the rail trail committee, and mm -hmm. you know I, that's not a town road, the rail trail. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and I don't know whether they if it's a official. <coughs> I mean, it is a. a Trail and there was a committee that oversaw it, um, but Brian might know um, if there is a right of way with that trail. Because um, I know they would go and clear trees and brush on the sides of it. Um, mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't that, I mean, that should be spelled out in the lease. I mean, we it have should a be lease somewhere. I mean, we yeah. for yeah. that. There's a, there's a the lease map. would have gone through, it if it say. goes through multiple properties, it would have affected all of them. Right. So how could one look that up? Like go into the town office and <laughs> look in the drawers. <laughs> I'm not well, sure. Robin knows yeah. where the file is. Yeah, do you have, you have access to the that? The rail trail file, yeah. Being the land designated as that portion of the right of way of a private railroad spur commonly known as the Hardwick Woodbury Railroad Line extending from the northerly side of Holton Road in the town of Woodbury to the com and that doesn't make sense, but to the common town line in the towns of Hardwick and Woodbury. A portion of the aforesaid right of way comprising the leased premises is highlighted on a copy of the town of Woodbury tax map attached to this agreement as exhibit A, which of course it isn't, but um, I don't know. Yeah, I never like to assume anything, but I would assume that a lawyer probably wrote that lease up uh -huh. so mm -hmm. that they would have made sure that we have mm -hmm. right to to maintain you know, a certain distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to verify would be what that distance is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because we are going to move it a bit. Yeah, but it'll be within the 25 it, feet. If it's, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways. But Chris did do some research on this, and quite okay. certain, so I think he might be. Mm -hmm be able to help quite a lot with that. It's kind of odd how on this map it shows this right this uh, um, right away I mean, rectangular thing up to the property line of Fritz and Fitz rather and then yeah, nothing again until you get to part of the room. But I don't know what that means. I don't think they have to worry. It's been there for what, 20 years? So, how long do you have to spend with FEMA tomorrow? Uh, zip tie him to the <laughs> shirt. Oh. <laughs> so we can't well, wait. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to show up somewhere around yeah, well, 11. Yeah. yeah. FEMA call kicks off at 9 a.m. So uh -huh. I'm hoping they'll have some timely information for us on a couple of things, which I'll get into. Mm. And then Danielle and I will start working on damage inventories. Mm. And then Alfie will come in. And hopefully we won't keep you too long. Because yeah. mm. we're, you know, we're getting to it. We have, you know, a lot of work that we've already completed, but there's more work to do. Mm. But and that's part of my presentation. I won't go overboard here. Okay. So other than that, I mean, we're just we've cleaned up a bunch of landslides mm -hmm. last week. Got those done uh, in anticipation of this big project. I'm still trucking sand when I can. 
Mm. Um, we are halfway there for our <coughs> for the amount that we purchased. Mm. Um, but we'll get it. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll have time. Um, I've got one truck in the shop right now, and I made an appointment. I had to wait for two weeks to get an appointment. Mm. Uh, the appointment was for last Thursday. I called them today just to check in on them, and they haven't even got it in the shop yet. Oh, which so, truck is that? The 13, 2013. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The one that we're trading in. Oh. Uh, and while we're on trucks, the new truck is in, but it's December 1st before it goes and gets the body and the files all put on. Uh -huh. So I'm not <laughs> anticipating seeing that until probably February or March. <laughs> we'll have it for month season, certainly, but <laughs> probably not before that. <laughs> the jackets come in in May, right? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So that's kind of a bummer, because they, they yeah. did tell us that as soon as the truck landed, they'd get it in and start building it, but here we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you're getting the other one ready for winter. Yes. Yeah, we've got a salt contract already signed. Um, mm -hmm. We should be all set with with all of that. I still sort of searching for a part time helper. Mm -hmm. um, but coming up empty handed so far. So after hunting season, will Greg be available right away, or? Uh, he said he would be able to help off and on. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He doesn't officially retire till the end of the year, right? Until right until January. Yeah. Okay. But even then, he said he would he would still help out. But he goes mm -hmm. to a maximum of twenty four hours, twenty two or twenty four hours per week. That's all he can work. Oh. Because of his retirement. Mm. Which is fair. I mean, that's, yeah. that's you know whatever that's the rules the are. Typical. Hmm. Um, any questions about <laughs> roads? <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for you, Alfred, that we were here in the same room together. Um, so today I was part of a crew that went up to the top of Woodbury Mountain and removed um, a number of signs that were There's kind of more up there. to a tree up there. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Most of them were Woodbury Road signs. Um, oh. And I just bring them, and they have graffiti over them, they're probably no good anymore. Right. Um, <coughs> can I just bring them and throw them in a dumpster at the town garage? Uh, and or leave them out for you guys to decide? Yeah, there's a pile right at the corner of the building. <laughs> okay. That's where our, our, our recycled metal is. Okay. So you just put it in that pile. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there are a couple of good sign poles that... Um, oh, yeah. Well, if you just so put it there, I'll sort through it. And okay. Keep right. the good and get rid of the bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Was that a specific work project? Or? It was uh, a new kind of Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 That was okay. some work. Those things are heavy. They were, yeah. Yeah, really. So yeah. the okay. handles yeah. steal them from the side of the road and take them up there. They go all the way up to the top of Woodburn yeah. Mountain and drop them off. Drop them off. Uh, bolt them to a tree up there. Yeah. Really? Really, they bolted them to a yeah, tree. What I found was a full bolt with a, with a road sign and a mm -hmm. yield. So it's huge. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Huh. So, um, yeah, yeah, just put them okay. there and all sort of them right. open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you want to hang around for Skip's report after we hear from Paul? Or if you want to go, you can. Probably, I'll probably hear enough of him tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you before go. you go, I have this for you. It's um, oh, right. a That's... copy of the current employee policy. Oh, right. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, but th is this the one where it's done? With? That's the one that we all. Um, That's the one you're working on now. Yeah, we all went through and like put edits and then gave Chris a version that has our collective edits. Okay. Um, so that obviously doesn't have those edits on it, but you could put your own thoughts on it. Yeah. Is it like yeah. finished? Finished? No. Yeah. Mike and I are just laughing. You're working on over here. Yeah, it'll get done right after we finish the <laughs> class four road policy. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Healthy, right, and yes. good luck this week. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. So the, the one with the um, jackhammer goes first, 
And the other one? Uh, they'll work side by side. Well, probably the hammer will smash it out first. Yeah. And the other one will clear the rubble. Okay. Because you got to be able to see where you're, where you're yeah. jackhammering. Yeah. You know? mm. So it'll be, you know, and it's fairly <coughs> close mm. corners, so mm. yeah. you got to kind of smash it out first, then the other yeah. one will come in and get rid of it. <sighs> oh. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. But there's still, there's another culvert that I have to put in first before I can even get Oh, there. even to get there? Oh. Yeah. At that same location or at another No, but further between back? between Buck Lake and the and Oh, the okay. Oh, wow. So but I've got the culverts already in, it's it's already it's you know, it won't take us long for mm -hmm. that. Okay. Uh, so feel free to drop by and pay a visit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I climbed up there once from Andy Rosen's property. It was a Oh, that's a hike. Quite a climb. Even though they have a have steps. But I never could do it now. <laughs> right. It's way easier to go down. Huh? That's, nice. That's quick. <laughs> that was nice. Bye. Thank you. Paul, thank you for hanging around. Yeah, no problem. I hear someone else is spinning their wheels too. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so, my update is we're still waiting for the insurance company, which is holding us up on doing any FEMA submittal with the building. She can't. Michelle, you're working with Michelle too, right? So she's held up on writing up our building project because the insurance company, they, we have to settle up with the insurance company. We're, which is VLCT? Right. So we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 70K with the in contents loss, which looks like that's covered. And then mm -hmm. we're in negotiations because they didn't haven't credited us for the work gutting the building, work cleaning up in the building yet. So we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 to 125,000 damage to the building. So that's kind Say of- Say that again, 70? 90 to, 90, they got 91 is where we're at, and it could be as high as 125, that's where. But I'm, they're, they're pretty unresponsive at the moment, so I don't, they're just, all I get is we're busy. So, mm. <laughs> um, so that's that. <laughs> so we all. Uh, you want to stick on FEMA or on the building? We didn't want to hear first. Doesn't matter. So, so FEMA is, we're still grinding through. I got, we're providing the information. I guess Michelle writes up these projects. Am I missing that? Well, my call, because what I have, I don't have town roads, I have calls, the rescue calls. Right. So I've got to provide her with the timesheet, which I've got to put all the stuff on, which is what I'm working on, and then GPS locations of the. Did you provide her a damage inventory? We have that. It, we, we, it's being put onto their spreadsheet now on the building. But again, we can do nothing with the building until the insurance company finishes. That's not necessarily true. Well, that's what she told me last week. Because she can't. She's like, I can't write this project up yet. What I did is I took the information from the town's insurance company because you have a quote from them. Mm -hmm. And with that, I took that information and made a damage inventory. I already had a damage inventory started, <coughs> excuse me, with the uh, volunteers who uh, got rid of right. the debris. Mm -hmm. So it was like a quote, category A in this damage right. inventory. So the rest of the damage inventory included the cost of uh, the stuff that was lost, cost to repair the walls, cost to refinish the cellar floor, and submitted that. So with that, what she'll do is she'll issue a project number. And she's key, she's the only one that can issue project numbers. And absent project numbers, you're kind of dead in the water. Right. And that's what she told us. And she said, she, well, I'm frustrated in the process. I, I, Don't tell me about first. Yeah. <laughs> we're really behind for where the town is because we just barely had our first follow up. Project we had a scoping and then yeah. a follow up. So now we finally have what we need to start doing. I just got that last week. If you need week. any assistance, fill them out. Just let me know. Yeah, we will be in touch. because I, mm -hmm. I, so, so to add insult to injury, we've got the potential buyout, which I'll be sending mm -hmm. Robin an email. I need to know the value of the existing station because if, it's, if the damage is more than 50% of the value of the building, then it moves us up the chain. That's part of why mm -hmm. Michelle's, she doesn't, she needs all, I need to finish getting all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that some bigwig from FEMA wheeled in here last week. He's the head of something around here. Big, he's like the head honcho, and he's he like got in front. And he says, "It's no problem. We're gonna we're gonna 
before winter, we'll get you a 3,000 square foot building built across the street to move your equipment and do it. I'm like, I've been trying for a year and a half. You're not going to get a building. Is that a guy named Craig Jones? Uh, I got his card. It's my Tim something. Tim. He huh. was the head of mitigation or something, the director hmm. of something. Um, and I said, well, we have, we don't really need that. We need other things. But anyway, so I'm, I'm slowly compiling this. I'll send you an email if we can pull the listers value mm -hmm. of the building. Yep. We'll use that. Um, so, so that's where we are. That they they denied us on the bank damage because there's no building there. So that's going to be on our own. I kind mm -hmm. of thought that, but it was worth the uh, it was worth the try. Mm -hmm. um, they will end up once we put my. I've probably got 27 or 28 emergency calls and cleanup. Mm -hmm. Which again, any of the basement pumping you don't be put in as emergency because it had to save I mean, dealing with electrical panels and whatnot. They, so that law, once those projects are done, we'll give them to her. She'll create a project number, and they'll figure all that out. So really, it's the building. And it's my understanding, because you may know more about this, that they'll cover whatever gap the insurance doesn't cover. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. That's kind of what I'm And any deductible you have as well. Yeah, they, they might, VLCT might be combining our deductibles, is what I was told from Susan, mm -hmm. from VLCT. But I'll find it. The town office deductible with the fire yeah, station. They shouldn't do that. Yeah, well, I, that's why I said okay. The same policy. So, but I'll, I'll. But again, I, I, what I, I need them to be responsive. I need them yeah. to. We, we're, we're at the point where this claim. We need to settle this claim right. because uh, we own the property. What's going to happen is, um, we're. I've got the furnace fixed finally, and I've got a new mm. chimney, and I've got someone who's going to come insulate, and that's where mm -hmm. we're going to stop for now. Because mm -hmm. um, we're trying to get moved out of the town hall because it's really not uh, cool to be in there. We can't really <laughs> heat the space. And so that's the plan for the winter. So hopefully in the next month we'll, I just, I'm hoping really hard. Mm -hmm. the, the best way to proceed in my mind would be somehow to get a damage inventory in there. Because you can use that as a placeholder. Right, that's, yes, that's what we're doing. Right. Once it gets in, then you can always go back. And, and right, the damage and, and that's exactly what she said. She's got that information. She's got the insurance company. You must have got an adjuster's report, right, on the town hall, town mm -hmm. clerk's office. She has that. She has that. She has the insurance. And she has company. our list of um, of uh, content. So she has all that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but her little hiccup now is with the mitigate with the potential buyout mitigation issues throws another monkey wrench in the work. Is what she told mm -hmm. me. Do you know the data? when your damage inventory is due? I do not right now. Six, 60 days after your project scoping meeting. Right, okay, so we're, that, that was three weeks ago, yeah. Three weeks ago, so you got time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so we're dealing, I, I'll be calling you because I just, I'm a little lost in the, in the whole part. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's where we're at with that. So hopefully we'll get out of the town hall um, and I don't know what's gonna happen after that, we'll just, Kind of see what happens. <laughs> We're all wishing really hard. Well, nothing much happens in there in the winter, anyways. No, right? but it's just the problem is we're being slammed with calls. We're at 170 calls already mm -hmm. this year. So we're some of that stuff you need. We're just getting yeah. hammered. Mm -hmm. We're not having easy calls. We're having a lot of really tough calls. Mm -hmm. We've already had one fatality this weekend, a bad mm -hmm. car accident. Mm -hmm. Two people burned last weekend in a house fire. Mm -hmm. So we're having a lot of really tough calls. Mm -hmm. So it's I'm having the struggle of keeping things operating hmm. and trying to get all this paperwork done. It's just been a lot. Aren't you glad you retired? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then my work's decided to be busy. There's going to be all over the place. So anyway, we're trying. Yeah. We'll, we'll, get, wow. we'll meet the deadlines. So, um, um, hmm. One thing, and emergency management director is not here, but mm -hmm. we, I gathered up a bunch of cleanup kits mm -hmm. and equipment that we're going to need to find a home for. Mm. Um, and, um, something to have on your radar is maybe the town purchasing a storage container mm. to store our emergency response supplies in because we aren't going to have room for this stuff. Um, there's like wheelbarrows and fans and buckets with cleaning stuff and um, that sort of stuff. Mm. They, like a week, two weeks after the flood, they dropped a whole bunch and there's a mm. bunch in the town hall and I've got a bunch in the fire station. We're going to find another mm. home for it because I just mm. don't have room for it. So anyway, that's the size. So something to be thinking about mm. if you talk to the EM director and we might look at doing that uh, mm -hmm. to put that stuff in so we have it in one spot for the next time something happens. Uh, so that's the circumstance with the building, the uh, hopefully to get out of the town hall, I'm hoping, but we'll see. Um, 
and then across the street with nothing on the bank. So that's where we're at. Hmm. So you really think they intend to build you a building? I smiled. Oh. There's no way they're going to build. <sighs> no. <laughs> they, they throw a lot of stuff out that, and then when I, he says, tell, because uh, uh, it was just before my meeting with Michelle, and he says, tell her all this and she'll know what to do. And when I talked to Michelle, she was like, <laughs> I don't really know. Um, it, it will be a process mm. regardless. So whether, you know, we're hoping, mm. we're trying to get signed up to get that other building under construction by the spring, but Ooh. I don't, like, this kind of morphs into the highway. I haven't seen the highway culvert being anything happening there. So that could, uh, I don't know, I've, I've called the state because we have to start in the spring. I've done, we're trying to control our costs right now. Mm. We're seeing six and 7% increase in construction cost interest mm -hmm. rates we're trying to get this mm -hmm. locked down mm -hmm. now um, and we'll have to own up to whatever happens with the price on town meeting day mm -hmm. because we just that's where we're at if we mm -hmm. if we don't get moving we will we'll lose all next summer mm -hmm. which again the costs just keep going up <sighs> so i don't know mm -hmm. that i'm gonna have to i mean i don't know whatever the state if they're gonna wait till spring we may have to withdraw oh, God. our permission yeah. to use our property because really? i can't keep inevitably Mm -hmm. They claim they're going to give us some money for the delay, but at some point it's not going to be a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. it's going to be two hundred thousand. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's just mm -hmm. I can't just in edit because no contractor is going to sign with us and say I'm starting in May. Say <sighs> if they stay yeah. highway people, we don't know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So that's my heartburn. I've got yeah 19 balls in the air. <laughs> yeah. So the state, I don't know. You guys haven't heard anything on the state project. Well, I, I heard the, about a week ago. I had an email with the. Adam Boudreau, and he and said still today. talking or late October, Which were November. There. Yeah, right. But they're really yeah. screwing us up because I had a contractor mm. ready to go do our bank stabilization oh. October first, and oh. I could have had it done. Yeah. Oh. So I'm not real happy. I mean, I mm. the state's never been great neighbors with this type of thing in mm. my view, and I told them that, and here we are mm. again. It's just you know we're just stuck. So. Mm. They couldn't fit that building onto our little park, could they? 3,000 square? I have no idea how much. Well, the, the, problem, the, the problem is, it's like you found out with the gazebo. Um, I have an architect, I have a structural engineer, I have a civil engineer. Yeah. I have 13 permits. I just got the last permit for the building, which cost $11,000. Oh, God. Um, all fundraised money. We haven't spent any tax money yet. We've done this all. All our permitting's been paid for. All the design's been paid for. We've donated funds. So. Mm. Um, that's why these like that's why I just smirk because if I if, even if we were to put an addition on our new building, okay, just let that float around. Mm -hmm. um, getting the permits to do it, you'd have to have a new highway access. You'd have to revisit yeah. your wastewater. You'd have to revisit. We, we're already revisiting our wastewater. I've got a couple three grand in design issues with engineers already because of the highway project, and I'm concerned we're not going to recover that. Right? You see, everyone mm -hmm. said so. We're just. Hunting, I guess, mm. is the best part. How long are those permits good for? Is it just a year? Most of them, yeah, within a year. A lot, a lot of used to go to work a little bit, you're fine. And mm. the fire safety was the one I delayed the longest on because it's the most expensive and it has a one year, but you can go over there mm. and cut a tree down. And I, I worked on the project. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm right. around. <laughs> I'll bring my tractor over and move some dirt. You worked on it, right? Yeah. Nothing mm -hmm. says what work is. We're just mm. slow. We're doing it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't see the the electric department coming to move that bank or anything. Yeah, because they're supposed to cut the bank back. There's one more wire to move. There's phone wires to move. There's. So they're waiting for the, somebody to yeah, pull the I trigger. Yeah, I need stream elevation for oh. my engineer to design our catch basin. It's got to go across <laughs> there when they do their work. So it's like they're just trying to share what's. I mean, I must have nine balls in the air that I just uh, don't know well, what's going to happen mm, right now. Can't wait to braid up. And our building, which was really insufficient before, is like super hard to work mm. out of now because we've got it. We're going to try to get it taped up, and it's, both buildings right now are very inefficient to run any heat mm. in. But I'm, I've got the heat on because mm -hmm. I. Um, I do have a contractor that's going to s scrape some people off in the next few weeks to insulate for us and strap it. Mm -hmm. but then we have to wait until we resolve. I don't want to pour mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. into that building if mm -hmm. they end up buying it out. We could have used on the new project because mm -hmm. obviously we're making some pretty mm -hmm. significant cuts over there because of cost increases. So that's just where we're at. Mm -hmm. To see how much less hair I have, <laughs> you have way too much hair to have that much. <laughs> 
Well, thank you for that <laughs> pleasant update. I sent you, and I'll, what I'll do is, if you want to put me on again for the second meeting, I can usually make these, okay. and I'll just send you if anything changes. Yeah. And when I hear from Adam again, uh -huh. hopefully they get it done this year, because I really want to see that happen. Really? And them digging part of that bank out is beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. um, but mm. I just can't see us waiting to an unknown date for you. Mm -mm. No. You're not going to sign a contract to start in May, and you don't know they're going to start in May. Uh, really? Because <laughs> if we can get it signed, they can start purchasing materials before costs go up, and we'll have stuff ready to go in the spring. But mm. That's where we're at. No, thank you for taking care of all those million details. <laughs> <laughs> I never imagined it would be as difficult. I knew it was going to be difficult, but like it has level like expert difficult now. Because then the state had to stick their nose in after them. we had a flood, and then the state sticks their nose in, so it makes it mm. really hard. Mm -hmm. I'll keep mm. you informed. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we move along to the recovery officer's report? Yeah, I have a question. Oh. Where did you come up with that title, recovery officer? I think Norman suggested that. Oh, Norman. Because I was you're, calling, you're it, huh? I, I was calling you the FEMA czar, and I guess you didn't think that was FEMA appropriate. Point of, FEMA point of contact would have been fine. You okay. should have a badge, well, though. I think. You can get a jacket. Don't get it. And a hard hat. And a hard hat with a GoPro on. I need the hard hat working with these guys. Mm. So uh, we had a meeting last. I'm all. You guys all sat. Thank you. Call me if you need. Thank you, Paul. Call me, Paul. Oh, see you. It won't be tomorrow. I got to work tomorrow. It won't be. I won't be. Okay, right. you're. Okay. <laughs> so we had a meeting last Tuesday with FEMA. It was a conference call. Uh, FEMA couldn't be there on site. So anyhow, uh, I sent them a list of seven questions, and the first question was: There an update from the original site inspection that that happened on September seventh, twenty twenty-three? A gentleman named Lenny Havel went out and visited three sites. And when I asked our FEMA point of contact, she said, go to the Grants portal, which I had up on my computer, and there was no report. So I said to our uh, FEMA contact, okay, where is it? And she didn't know, so she couldn't find it either. So at least we were both on the same page. And so we knew there was going to be a site inspection, or there was going to be a site inspection, uh, or she wanted to send a site inspector out for this week. And I said, okay, uh, when can you send that person? And she said, any day, any time. And she had yelled over to a colleague like I had alluded to before, and so sent her an email almost immediately saying that there will be a site inspection. 9 o'clock today, mm. and here's Alfie's, our, our road commissioner, sees his contact information, you know, run it through him, how to meet, how to get out there. Didn't happen. Mm. So I called her today, and I said, you know, pretty disappointing in the fact that it didn't happen again. And we still don't have the site inspections from September 7th. So we have a meeting tomorrow, and that will be high on the agenda list. So what's going on? Mm. So damage inventory forms. These are the forms that are key in, in which you have 60 days from your project scoping meeting to put them on their grants portal. So I had put up as, as like a test two damage inventories, one for Blake Hill Road and one for Wilbur Road, which we had completed 100%. Mm -hmm. So the grants portal that I'm using is the same grants portal that she's using. And with that, I can see our damage inventories on the grants portal. She cannot. Mm -hmm. So she said, send them to me, and then she'll post them on the grants portal. I said, OK, that's fine. And you know, I'll make a, a note when they were sent, because we want to be sure within, we're in that 60-day time frame. So I sent them to her. She couldn't post them. She said, uh, I can't post them, would you do it? And it was like, oh. So. Is it the formatting or? Well, I don't know. Yeah. You know, you know, I like to think that I'm 
pretty computer savvy, and mm -hmm. I get on these portals and follow instructions. And I even went online and got a uh, YouTube video on how to do this. <laughs> and I'm doing everything correctly, and our forms are getting posted. So right here, we have mm -hmm. four damage inventories on the portal for a total amount of $49,400, mm -hmm. and she can't see them mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And it was funny, she directed me to, we have a FEMA program application guide that's like 400 pages long. And she said, Skip, go to page 283. It'll tell you how to do it. Okay, so anyhow, we're having issues with she not being able to see our damage inventory, even inventories, even though they are posted. Rest assured, they are posted. Mm -hmm. They're entitled damage inventories. And so, when we started talking about, where's the next one? So how do we begin to complete forms? And there are several forms right after you do a damage inventory. There's a force labor summary. Mm. There's a force account equipment summary. There's a project worksheet. There's also a form for leased equipment. So any of the leased equipment that the town utilizes, like those two large excavators, will be able to you know, claw back from FEMA the cost of those. You know, up to 75% from FEMA, and then additional 20%, I believe, from the state. So we'll be able to recoup 95% of that. So uh, I can't do anything on those until she assigns a project. Mm. So if she can't find the damage inventories, she can't assign a project. Mm. So what she'll do, which is good because it'll cut down on paperwork that I have to do, <laughs> is she'll lump these damage inventories together mm. into one project. So instead of having like 30 different projects, we may have 15, which will make my life a little bit easier, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the town offices and about the insurance claim that uh, Robin had just received. And we talked about that, and she said, send me all that information, and she'll take a look at it. And with that, she may be able to, uh, she will be able to, if you have to pay any deductibles, get that money back. And I noticed there was some depreciation in the uh, insurance form, mm -hmm. too. So it was about $3,000 worth of depreciation. She may be able to get that back. And so I s sent that to her, sent all the information I have, and a damage inventory for the town offices. So she has all that information. Mm -hmm. And what other notes? So we talked about class four roads, too. Ooh. Because uh, she said, unless you can demonstrate that you have a class four road policy, we won't be able to recoup any money. What? That's their, well, that's their policy. So looking into the orange book, I said, well, in the orange book, there is a passage on class four roads. Mm -hmm. And it's in section 13, parts one, two, and three. And I sent her the orange book, highlighted the passages, and from our fiscal year 2024 budget, I got a line item for class four road maintenance. Mm -hmm. So I believe in that section 13, it said class four roads would be ma maintained at the discretion of the town. So with that information from the orange book and with the line item in the budget, we've demonstrated that we do maintain class four roads. So any work we do on class four roads, <coughs> excuse me, like Old mm -hmm. Quarry Road, or Town Highway 24, which is, I believe, Carol Ray's mm -hmm. place. And we have another Class 4 road, Town Highway 23, which there is some... And Jarnus's, probably? Yeah, and that's know. actually Class 3, I think. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah, but then there was a while to work up on... Yeah, maybe I misspoke. Maybe it's not Town Nichols Highway Pond. 23. Mm -hmm. I can't remember 23 or 24. Yeah, Nichols Pond. Road, yeah, mm -hmm. we talked about that. Yeah, that's class four, where they fixed up the road up to right. the edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so we quantified that, mm -hmm. that cost as well. Yeah. So there'll be another damage inventory that will. And, and state statute, you know, any class four road, the town is responsible for any culverts, bridges, right. and at this point in time, erosion too. And 
the semi erosion connected. Yeah. So you think that she'll be happy with that? I, I looked at that. You sent that around, and that orange book does, it has a table of contents with no page numbers. So that's a real pain in the butt. Well, it had a section. I yeah, know. It's it's you just got to go through and through. It took me like a minute to yeah. figure that out. Yeah, um, I have to keep going through. Yeah, but, so but that's good that you send it to her and highlight it. 13, 12. Yeah. And on page 28. Yeah. So I sent her all that information. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the line item in the town budget. Mm -hmm. so and we can go back to other years to have the same line item. Yeah. If she's well, if she I don't asks. know if she, well, yeah, if she wants if that she wants historic it, yeah. information, right. you can certainly send that to her. Mm -hmm. So what else? What else did I send her? Oh, damage inventories. To date, we have five damage inventories up on their portal mm. for Wilbur Road, Town Office Damage, Town Highway 24, which I believe is Carol Ray's mm -hmm. bridge, radar speed control sign, mm -hmm. and Blake Hill Road. Those five entries total $49,400. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do that tomorrow... That includes the labor? That includes material labor and equipment usage. Oh, great. Yeah. Hmm. What we'll, I'll upload tomorrow is Foster Hill Road. It's ready to upload. Tebbets Hill Road. Uh, and that's the only two that are ready to upload. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we'll be completing, hopefully, Cabot Road, Chardia Hill Road, County Road, Dog Pond Road, East Hill Road, Cape Brook Road, King Pond Road, Nichols, Pond Road, I think that might be done. Class 4, Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. uh, yeah, so we have 10 road, Class 3 roads left to do. The park, the estimate for the park, which, thank you, mm -hmm. you got that from Russell, and I'll do a uh, damage inventory sheet for that tomorrow. And Brady's going to get you the at, uh, bill from the guy who did the northern section right. of the park, DNR. The rail trail, I'll need an estimate. Yeah, that's going to be mm. huge. That I'm deadline really is really fast approaching, right? I'm sorry? The deadline for that is, when is that the 1st? November 1st? November 12th? It's due, they're due November 6th. November 6th, right. okay. So, again, you know, it's, it's damage inventories are like placeholders. If you mm -hmm. don't have, like some of, the, some of these roads, the work has been completed on. So what you do is you capture the emergency work, how to temporary work, how to get them passable, and then the final work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. where this rail trail, you know, is probably going to be all temporary unless... Alfie was saying yeah. what they're doing is going to be permanent, and so can we, like, we'll have the cost since they're starting the work tomorrow. We'll know really what In the another week, were. you should have a pretty good idea. So, right. well, that's the key—a pretty good idea. <laughs> you know, a pretty good idea is different mm -hmm. from having the final yeah. figures. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so as long as I get an estimate, you know, you can always go back and revisit these documents. Oh. Who will you want an estimate from for that? So our road crew is doing the work. From our road crew. And okay. Alfie. Got it. Like mm. I said, I was going to zip tie him to the chair tomorrow. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to, my, my goal is to get damage inventories, as many as possible, up onto the portal somewhere mm. by Friday. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, so we're not scrambling around next week. Uh, you know, scrambling around. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. That would drive me crazy. Wait, Can I ask a second? question? Does anybody know who owns the little footbridge down here that goes from the post office over through to the skating rink? I tried to find that out a couple of years ago. Robin, because but... that got hammered in that yeah. flood, too. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. The boards were starting to rot, and there was somebody did fix one board. On and somebody the... looked down under it, and it looks like it's come off the foundation a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. so. It probably has with the flooding, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't is know. Is that a snowmobile bridge? No, no, no. no it's it's a, a the little footbridge right yeah, by the rink that goes mm -hmm. towards the post office. Oh, that's, that I don't know who. Yeah. It's been there for a long time. I yeah, know. I thought it looks like the ladies auxiliary because that's who owns the land, you, right? Yeah, I have no Another idea. Another subject. Norman was here to, to hear you talk about the potential school. Yeah, I noticed it wasn't on the agenda. Oh, I thought it was. No. Oh, um, sorry. I, yeah, oh, okay. I mean, I can. Well, skip oh, never mind. No, not. Why don't we say it for the next meeting? Yeah, because okay. Norman wanted to talk about that, and that's. And I did print out some copies of the lease. Yeah, okay. um, I could leave them. Oh, great. I'll leave yeah, them here. Okay. Does it have a check mark? <laughs> it doesn't have anything about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry for the interrupt. I'm starting to fall asleep. <laughs> it's been a long. So yeah, I will. Um, here's some copies of the lease, and I'll actually kind of leave them with you, Robin. And, sure. And I can e I can also email this. Okay. Um, but. And the least really isn't germane to the question, but um, but yeah. it does give everybody a sense of the agreement that we have. Okay. Those Could we see those? Are those for us? Or yeah. Okay. Actually, get one for Rob. <laughs> another discussion yeah. about it. So yeah. I want to call. Okay. Thank you. So I also. She had asked for any timesheets, so I uploaded the timesheets for debris removal mm -hmm. at the town office. So those are uh, categorized as uh, category A because it's volunteer work mm -hmm. for debris removal. And I also uploaded my time, which is category Z, which is more administ administrative. And they're both. Uh, at an hourly rate of $28.14 an hour. Mm -hmm. So that's a total of $1,700 for debris removal at the uh, town offices. And my, so far, $2,900 for, for what I've done. Mm. And where does Danielle fit in? In terms of? In the same category? Well, of administrative she, costs? Yeah, she yeah. scheduled Z, okay. uh, which is administrative. Okay. So we'll be able to get back from FEMA $28.14 oh. of her consulting fee, mm -hmm. which is a little bit greater than that, but mm -hmm. well worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Really well worth it. I'm glad. Yeah, she's uh, jumped right in and she's yeah. really good. Mm. So, that's oh. about it, but I have one more thing. Uh, so this project is taking a lot more of my time mm -hmm. than I thought it would. You know, initially mm -hmm. I thought just, you know, skimming over the documents mm -hmm. required, uh, I didn't think it would get to this point where I'm spending, like mm -hmm. in September I had 44 hours worth of work. And so far in October I have 28 and I have a meeting tomorrow, and you know, getting those damage inventories out, I'll probably have over 40 hours for the month of October. So what I'd like the select board to consider is that uh, I start being reimbursed going forward instead of doing my work pro bono, mm -hmm. and that I would be reimbursed at the rate of $28.14 an hour, which is the FEMA rate. So there would be no harm done to mm -hmm. the town budget or the taxpayers. That these monies would come directly from FEMA, or actually through the state, and then to the town. So I'm just offering that as a consideration for the select board. Go I forward. think that's a good idea. I think it's totally good. Can I make another motion? I will make a motion, but I have a question first. Okay. It, it also <laughs> seems fair, if it's possible, to maybe even consider going retroactive. I was thinking no, that too. Okay. No? no. Okay. Because um, I said I said I was going to do a pro bono. Yeah. Uh huh. And then, you know, I can that's see. Ridiculous. Well, no, because I don't mind volunteering. It's a lot of work. That's the thing. <laughs> But uh, I can see that with these other documents that are required, it's it's going to take 
a lot more effort. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, Danielle is there, and you know she keeps me in line, which is good. You said so, twenty-eight what? Twenty-eight dollars and fourteen cents. Fourteen. A princely mm -hmm. sum. Really? So I will make a motion um, to start uh, paying Skip twenty-eight dollars and fourteen cents an hour going forward, starting now or starting the first, like today. starting today. Yep. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Well worth it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so we have a meeting tomorrow, which will prove interesting. Another phone meeting? Yes, yeah. They're not coming in person anymore? Not to Woodbury. Mm. <laughs> she was going to Tunbridge last week, and we got off our meeting at, our meeting started at 9, she had to be in Tunbridge at 11.30, oh. and it was 10.30 and she was still in Williston. Well, so well. I said, well, good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Yeesh. So that's all I have. Hmm. Any questions? When I'm going through, when I'm writing the minutes and I have to look, watch this all on TV, when I get to your section, it gets really short. <laughs> <laughs> I get tired. Well, that's it's so okay. complicated. <laughs> Being concise is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so um, nothing from the emergency management director. John, did you have anything? Or did you just want to have an evening out? Well, I've got my wife at home cleaning up camp. Yeah. So we can shut it down. Yeah. So this gave me something to do, oh. stay out of her way. <laughs> I'll reconsider her next time. <laughs> Well, I hope you'll give her a full report. <laughs> and a wonderful time. <laughs> right. Oh. So, um, do we need an executive session? I feel like we could skip it. Do you yeah. think we could skip yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Let's skip it. We're not going to have an executive session. <laughs> oh, right we really right do right have us. We're missing yeah, our third really. musketeer. Yeah. Okay. So, um, motion to adjourn? Uh, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.